Welcome back from break. Thank you for being here. This is an incredible experience and I'm very thankful. We are very thankful that you're able to take some time out of your day to experience this with us. Before we jump in, I'm holding in my hand the single most modern piece of mapping tech, obviously from the 19th century. <laughs> the engineer's compass was one of the most intuitive and innovative applications and tools that was used to help us understand the world in which we lived. Equal in its functionality, it was designed beautifully. It is truly a modern work of art. Fast forward to the 20th and early 21st centuries, the art of mapping effectively lay dormant. It wasn't until 2009, in a unique experience with the Afghanistan elections, that you started to see a rebirth, a renaissance of the art of mapping. And today, I'm actually very excited to showcase how we're bringing that approach to field missions and data collection. I'm John Nomzowski, as Anthony mentioned. Brian Davidson is gonna act as both an engineer on our government team, uh, but also in a live scenario, he'll, he'll carry a couple different roles. We're all very familiar with what's been happening in the Midwest. Flooding, devastation, doesn't really seem to be an end in sight, and the future doesn't look too great over the next few weeks as well. But this quote in particular really caught my attention and, and brought about some of the, the, the perspective of the devastation that's occurring. You know, it's, it's one thing for our schools to be shut down, for stores to be closed. I mean, we even expect the grid to go down for a little bit and lose power. It's a whole other thing that the facilities that we rely on to actually help us and aid us in those recovery missions to be deemed non-operational. Quote from Lieutenant Colonel Hines of the National Guard recently from that. But what these scenarios do is they create an environment where the search and rescue operation is effectively deemed worthless, right? We can't communicate with each other. Coordination goes down. We aren't able to actually understand the extent of the damage. And unfortunately, uh, victims end up being unaccounted for. Probably everyone in this audience can understand that understanding the where, answering the where questions in these times is literally the most important thing. Maybe I'm biased as a trained geographer, but if I don't understand the geospatial context of any environment, whether I'm online or offline, then I don't know how to effectively operate. But when we don't have the infrastructure to actually leverage the technology that we've been given sometimes, we aren't able to understand where is the extent of the damage? Where are other groups setting up command posts? Where am I able to effectively land helicopters? Where are the proper ingress and egress routes so I can get people in and out of particularly displaced areas? The where is fundamental in all of this. But when your infrastructure is down, how do you effectively go about establishing the foundation of the where? That's why we're excited today in announcing the Mapbox Atlas Flyaway Kit. As you can see from the screen and also on stage here, this is a completely containerized version of Mapbox that comes with capability, content, and connectivity, all within one self-contained environment. But at the heart of this, is Atlas. And you heard right before break, Sean and Alex talk a little bit about Atlas, what it is, where it came from. At, the, at its core is global curated content directly out of the box. This is content that's leveraging Mapbox's vector tile spec, which is in the industry standard for, for the spec itself that we've actually pioneered and open sourced, but allows you the ability to embed this, this content into applications and create performant, lightweight uh, visualizations and experiences. Uh, Anthony touched on earlier the ability of Mapbox Studio to then go in and granularly edit these base maps, effectively styling them how you want to, fusing your data with the map itself and creating your own base maps for that mission. And what's unique about this, Anthony talked a little bit about it, but in the online context, this is completely self-contained in that box as well. So curated content, Mapbox Studio, adding in the notion of global geocoding, completely self-contained. So the ability for me to look up an address, a city, a region, or if I want to do reverse geocoding, if all I know is a lat long, the ability to leverage that technology in this stack and the capabilities comes completely out of the box. No connection, global coverage. Unique to the kit that wasn't necessarily talked about yet is a completely configurable and custom operational dashboard that comes out of the box, completely connected with the services from the curated content and the geocoding. 
But what's unique about this is not only does it give you an operational view for decision makers, it allows you to actually bring in different data sets that may not necessarily uh, come with the kit, but are being created in real time to help support the mission. At the end of the day, we can deploy this at a moment's notice as a completely self-contained search and rescue kit. But the key thing here is we're enabling all users. We're not just talking about developers who have been building applications with Mapbox. We're talking about decision makers, power GIS users, field crew. This kit can enable all of this in terms of understanding the foundational geospatial context and approach to a search and rescue mission. This is the goal. This is the beacon. This is our focus, right? It's capabilities, but it's whatever the mission calls for. It's wherever that mission could be, and effectively, whatever environment that mission is taking place in. It shouldn't matter. These are the capabilities that you can take with you when you need to, to actually stand up your geospatial centers. So with that, enough talking, let's dive into an actual live scenario where Brian, in this case, Sergeant Davidson, <laughs> will be uh, taking, a, uh, taking advantage of the kit itself. We'll, we'll look back at the, uh, the National Guard scenario in Nebraska where our operations center is effectively uh, shut down, and we'll jump right into that live scenario where we can showcase some of the capabilities of the Atlas and Flyaway Kit. Right out of the box, we start with a browser environment. We can pick any template from uh, the curated content that exists. You'll see the styles that come completely default here, but Sergeant, Sergeant Davidson has already created a style for us and have embedded custom content. We've got our style here, which incorporates our search grids right out of the box, but we now got new intel that the interstates are clear for passage. So we, what we want to do here is actually mark those interstates and turn them green to showcase that they're open for, uh, for traffic and transportation. At this moment in time, we can go ahead and publish that service out. The style is created on the fly in real time, no need to bake. We'll go ahead and publish here. You can build that service into any experience that you're creating, whether it's with any of Mapbox's native technology on iOS, mobile, web. More importantly, if you wanted to take it offline to go do further analysis, you can bring it into things like QGIS via WMTS service. Or if you want to go deeper on the data collection side, you can bring it into something like Fulcrum. But now that we've created the service and published it, let's take a look at it in our operations dashboard. Right off the bat, Sergeant Davidson turns into Major Davidson, a decision maker within the command. And effectively, what he's already done, which you may not be able to tell, he's leveraging a different browser. It doesn't matter what browser you're using. We know our, our customers are on different types of browsers. It doesn't matter. The capabilities, the functionalities, the visualizations are still there. So as Major Davidson is making decisions, we've gotten new intel that uh, our GIS department has effectively uh, created new helicopter landing zones, and we want to visualize on, that, on them on the map. So I'm going to ask Corporal Calamito to bring out our helicopter landing zones. Corporal Calamito is a GIS expert who went into QGIS to build out the helicopter landing zones. He exported them as shapefiles, saved them locally, and we've now able to take that off of a jump drive, open up our, our directory, the content's there, we see it in a shapefile, and we drag and drop that on a map. We're empowering the GIS expert who are creating the data. We're powering the decision maker who needs to see that in real time. And now, because this is a web service, it can be visualized on any device anywhere that's connected to the Atlas application. So what we've done there effectively in you know, less than five minutes is create an end-to-end -end product based off of the Flyway kit that can be leveraged from developers all the way up to decision makers. So please, we'll have this set up outside at our booth. We can show you the additional capabilities that we've built in. Would love to talk to you more about how you would envision applying this uh, to your mission. And if nothing else, you can play with some uh, really old, old tech here in my hand. So thank you very much. Thank you.